Canadian farmers of milk, eggs and poultry plan their production so as to avoid surpluses and respect the demands of the consumers with high-quality local products. Imports fill part of the needs, but their quantity is supervised. Family farms can prosper in this market without government subsidies, thanks to the agricultural policy called supply management. Supply management ensures our food sovereignty, supports ecological agriculture, helps only a few regional mega farms. Spot the error. The concept of food sovereignty is linked to food security. So, sovereignty is a political animal. It's the sovereignty of the states concerning their food processing policies to ensure food security inside their borders. I think supply management brings food security to a country, sure. If there was ever an incident of bird flu, the United States would decide to keep their food, or and another country would do the same. So if the Canadian industry isn't strong enough, Canadians wouldn't be sure to have enough to eat. Supply management offers a great deal to consumers. It allows them to have sufficient quality products all year long at stable prices. Furthermore, supply management farmers don't need government help to run their business. We've been talking forever about ecology, economy, how to avoid waste. Supply and management respects those principles to produce what people are going to consume. Managing production according to supply is an environmental decision. Because producing surpluses that end up being dumped in the market makes the prices collapse all over the map. From an environmental point of view, that's not too bright. It's not a good way to preserve our resources either. If we look at the available numbers compiled abroad concerning the dairy sector and we compare, we notice that the Canadian dairy sector is well positioned, notably concerning the carbon footprint, but also for water management. We do well on the level of environmental farm practices also, whether it be in manure management or planting practices, where farmers, for the most part, have adopted what we would call socially responsible ways of doing things. For many years, my father had to pay to get rid of the manure. Twenty years ago, nobody understood the value of farm manure. The first time I held clean, gauged fertilizer in my hand, I couldn't believe it. We came here, adapted the technology to Quebec winters, and from there, Actisol was born, twenty years ago. In fact, at Actisol, environmentally speaking, we thought it too bad that manure wasn't recycled. And we didn't have agricultural land at the time. We had to do something with our manure. So we chose to go in that direction. In our case, here in Quebec, in our sector, eggs travel very little. Eggs leave the farm, get to the classification station, just here in saint saint for example, and then they're redistributed across the larger region. If you travel around Quebec, you'll find businesses working under supply management in every region, from Abitibi to Lac Saint-Jean or in the lower St. Lawrence. And that's important, because one of the economic advantages of supply management is that it allows economic activity in every region of Quebec. That's important for us. It allows regional communities, schools and businesses to thrive. If we didn't have supply management as we do now, a lot of regions in Quebec would suffer. There's this myth that supply management is biased in favor of big farms found in certain specific regions only. I think that's really a myth.
We help the small garage, the small convenience store to stay in business. A lot of people depend on us. We're big input buyers. We're good customers for the small cooperative, the small hardware store around the corner. It's important we be here. We occupy the land. We embellish it by working on our farm. Where there's agriculture, there's life. It's beneficial to everybody. So it's an error to state that supply management helps only a few regional mega farms. Supply management in Quebec is 7,288 family farms, 42% of agricultural revenues, a $7.19 billion contribution to the GDP, and 81,971 jobs.